Hu Cheng told a story about a scorpion and a frog. The frog believed the scorpion's promise not to attack it and agreed to carry the scorpion across the river. However, midway through the crossing, the scorpion stung the frog, causing the frog to drown. Through this story, he warned his son never to trust anyone, including his parents, and to always rely solely on himself. Kong Kong's father's infidelity photos were orchestrated by Hu Cheng and deliberately posted online. His goal was to tarnish Ning Yu's reputation, making her lose job opportunities and ensuring she remained under his control. Ning Yu picked out a dark colored tie for Hu Cheng, which he accepted with apparent pleasure. However, on his way out, he switched back to his preferred light colored tie. Song, who co founded the business with Hu Cheng, commented during lunch that Hu Cheng looked better in a dark colored tie. This remark infuriated Hu Cheng. Using Song's recent surgery as an excuse, Hu Cheng suggested he take time to recover at home and subsequently dismissed him. Zhou Wei advised Hu Cheng to reconsider, reminding him that Song was an old classmate and that the three of them had struggled together to establish Yao Feng technology. Moreover, Song had just been discharged from the hospital, and firing him like this might demoralize other employees. Hu Cheng responded dismissively, saying, didn't I already give him severance pay? To preserve his authority, Hu Cheng told employees that Song had been relying on his seniority while no longer contributing to the company. He accused Song of embezzlement, claiming the company would not tolerate freeloaders. Hu Cheng framed his decision as a painful but necessary one for the company's well-being. Hu Cheng even promised a 20% raise for all employees. Hu Cheng hosted a family dinner for President Lan. Ning Yu wore a different key payo, earning President Ian's enthusiastic praise. During the dinner, President Lan proposed that Ning Yu provide her company with some legal consulting services, assuring her that it would be a paid arrangement. While Ning Yu reluctantly agreed, Hu Cheng interjected, saying, President Lan, let my company's legal team assist you instead. In the car, President Lan asked Zhou Wei, Hu Cheng wouldn't let his wife help me. Does that mean he doesn't trust me? Zhou Wei replied, not at all. Hu Cheng has no issues with you. He deeply cares for his wife, and this is just how he always handles such situations. After leaving the company, Song sought out lawyer Qin Kan to protect his rights. After listening to Song's account, Qin Kan said, If everything you've stated is true and you have evidence, I will make sure justice is served for you. Song nodded firmly in agreement. Xiaozu, who used to work at the service station, was specifically assigned by Hu Cheng to look after Ning Yu. Now that Ning Yu no longer works there, Hu Cheng instructed him to finish his tasks and then transfer to the Shanghai branch office. As Song's legal representative, Qin Kin met with Hu Cheng. Upon seeing Qin Kin, Hu Cheng remarked, How did Song end up hiring such a young lawyer? If I'd known, I wouldn't have come in person. But since I'm here, let me say a few words. Song was terminated according to the company's standard labor contract, and he was given sufficient severance pay. I don't see any grounds for a lawsuit here. You two lawyers can discuss the details. I'm heading back. Just as he was about to leave, Qin Kin called out, Mr. Hu, you'd better prepare yourself. We are not accepting any settlement. In a bad mood, Hu Cheng listened as Zhou Wei tried to reassure him, saying, Song must be upset and confused. He probably doesn't really intend to sue us. I'll go talk to him tonight and clear things up. Tian Kaiuzi arrived at Hu Cheng's office, ostensibly to discuss the legal contract, but in reality, she had come to keep him company. As soon as Zhou Wei left, the two became intimate in the office. Ning Yu went to the hospital to visit Kong Kong and happened to see Xiao Zhu handing Kong Kong's mother a sum of money claiming it was compensation from Hu Cheng. Ning Yu then asked Kong Kong's mother about the situation, and she responded, This matter ends here. I hope you won't come looking for me again. After leaving the hospital, Ning Yu followed Xiao Zhu's car and discovered that it led back to Hu Cheng's company. She saw Xiao Zhu talking to Hu Cheng, and then witnessed Hu Cheng and Tian Kaiuzi being overly familiar with each other. To her surprise, Hu Cheng personally drove Tian Kaiuzi away, further deepening her suspicions. When Ning Yu returned home, she directly asked Hu Cheng why Xiao Zhu had given money to Kong Kong's mother. 
Hu Cheng explained that the money was given to prevent her from making any more negative statements about Ning Yu online, and also as a way to formally close Ning Yu's work at the service station. Ning Yu then asked if there was anything else Hu Cheng needed to confess. Hu Cheng rambled on about various things but didn't mention anything regarding the girl. Ning Yu didn't press further, as she knew that even if she asked, Hu Cheng wouldn't tell the truth. Ning Yu went to the nursing home to visit her mother, and a staff member told her, Your husband is even more caring about your mother than you are. He calls every day to check on her condition and always reminds us to take good care of auntie. Her mother added, I really can't find any faults with this son-in-law of mine. Hu Cheng signed a major project with his senior, and he was very happy about it. Zhou Wei then suggested that, to avoid any negative impact on the company's listing, they should offer Song a severance package. Zhou Wei mentioned that Song had told him he would drop the lawsuit if he received the compensation. Hu Cheng agreed to the proposal. Song chose to settle the matter on his own, and Qin Ken was taken aback by the outcome. All the effort they had put in over the past period seemed to have been in vain. Qin Kan's assistant, exhausted from recent overtime, collapsed and fainted. The doctor informed them that the situation was serious, with a potential gastric ulcer complication. The assistant's mother, enraged, publicly blamed Qin Kan, saying, You bloodsuckers who exploit your employees will not have a good end. During dinner, President Ian's phone was placed next to Ning Yu's. Ning Yu picked up Ian's phone by mistake to check it, and Lan quickly apologized, saying, Sorry, that phone is mine. President Lan went to the restroom, and Ning Yu followed her. After Lan wiped away her tears, she opened the door and saw Ning Yu standing there. Lan grabbed Ning Yu's hand and explained, The message you saw earlier was just a joke from my best friend. My relationship with my husband is actually very good. Ning Yu replied calmly, I didn't even clearly see what the message said. Hu Cheng asked Ning Yu, what did President Lan talk to you about just now? She replied, she talked about infidelity her husband cheated on her. Hu Cheng responded, that husband of hers is really a piece of work. Ning Yu said, President Lan is so outstanding. How could her husband cheat on her? He replied, wife, let's not interfere in other people's family matters. She then said, I was just wondering, if my husband cheated on me, would I be able to endure it like President Lan? He reassured her, don't worry about it. I won't cheat. Qin Ken fell into self-doubt, feeling that he had failed to protect his client's rights. In his frustration, he offered to resign, but his supervisor did not approve of his resignation. Qin Ken expressed his firm decision to resign to his supervisor, and the supervisor reluctantly agreed. Ning Yu could not remain calm. Her husband, Hu Cheng, repeatedly claimed to love her, saying everything he did was for her and for their family. However, the image of him hugging that girl haunted her. She turned to her son and said, We're not going to be like small fish. We're going to be like lions, 